Well, ladies and gentlemen, now that I've considered it, that story that Fibber McGee told you about Violet and Ray wasn't such a fairy tale as it sounded. Johnson's Auto Wax does protect your car so that the ultraviolet rays of the sun cannot destroy the finish. Wax actually saves the finish of your car against the onslaughts of sun, rain, and road film. Now, before you wax your car, of course, you'll want to take off all the old grease and dirt that's been collecting on it. The simple way to get that dirty film off is to use Johnson's Auto Cleaner. It's the easiest cleaner you ever used, and it positively will not hurt the finish. Johnson's Auto Cleaner will make your car bright as new, and Johnson's Auto Wax will keep it that way. Keep it so beautiful the neighbors will actually believe you have a new car. Drive into a service station and tell them to make your car shine like it did the day it was first driven out of the showroom. They can do it in short order with Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. Or if you prefer, you can easily wax your own car. Thousands of owners are doing it. Just ask your regular dealer or service station for Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. And your dealer, by the way, will give you free a can of fine quality auto enamel for touching up worn or rusty spots on your car. Oh, but more about this free offer later. In the meantime, I'd like to present Miss Kathleen Wells. And personally, ladies and gentlemen, I think the S is on the wrong end of that name because she certainly is swell. Miss Kathleen Wells. <laughs> Miss Wells, Miss Wells is going to sing. Uh, well, what do you want, Fibber? Oh, not you, boy. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Hi there, too. <laughs> what you going to sing for me? If the moon turns green, Fibber. If the moon turns green, huh? Well, you ought to know if it doesn't know. You're, you're a kind of a heavenly body yourself. <laughs> Nipper McGee, come with me. Uh, uh, go on and turn it green, too. <laughs>
Kelly, with the help of a vocal triangle, finds that love is just around the corner. Fibber and Molly still chugging along and pulling into a filling station. Good evening, sir. Gasoline? Sure, fill it up. A halfway. Yes, sir. Uh, need any oil? Do I need oil, Molly? <laughs> I don't know, but you... Where do you squeak? <laughs> no oil. Nice little station you got here, son. Yeah, but I'm building on to it next month so I can handle washing and waxing. Hmm, been in business long? Oh, ever since I got out of the Army. Don't tell me you was in the Army. Sure. What division? The Rainbow. Why? Well, they had a swell record, boy. <clears throat> I was into the intelligence myself. The what, McGee? The intelligence. The what? The infantry. <laughs> that is, at first, and then I was into the cavalry and the Navy and the Foreign Legion. By jing, boy, there's a great outfit, the Foreign Legion. You know, the Foreign Legion is the toughest, hardest boiled bunch of fellas in the world. Most of us went into it to, to forget. Just, just forget. Well, what were you forgetting, sir? I forgot. You forgot what, McGee? <laughs> I forgot what I went in to forget. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I re-enlisted. See if I could remember what I joined up the first time to forget. <laughs> what was that, an army or a memory course, McGee? Oh, I'll never forget one thing, no. What was that, sir? Ermintrude. Aha! A girl, eh? Well, in a way. Ermintrude was a camel. Oh. A girl camel. Oh. <laughs> you see, I was assigned to the third camel court. Four, maybe. These were camels, not apples. <laughs> Ermintrude was a racing camel I had. Real sweet-tempered camel, as camels go. And did she go? No, but I did. Oh, so, so you left the foreign legion. Yes. And the hardest thing I ever done was to part with old Ermintrude. Ah, many's the time we used to ride over the desert together in the gloaming. Many's the time I'd get off to get a drink at the well into the hot sand. <laughs> then I'd put my foot onto Ermintrude's knee and say, Wasta mula. And up she raised me into the saddle. <laughs> ah, yes, sir. As I says, the hardest thing I ever done into my life was to leave Ermintrude. I'll never forget how her lips kind of quivered when I said goodbye. <laughs> I got a big lump into my own throat. <laughs> He swallowed his tobacco. <laughs> no, sir. T'was emotion. Oh. Well, sir, I left the Legion. Too many foreigners into it. 
But years later, I was here in New York one fall day, and I went in to get me an overcoat. In a rest. In a rest. No. In a clothing store. How do you do, Mr. McGee? Says the clerk, real respectful. I was well known in New York in them days. And Silly was respectful? Well, well, what happened then, sir? Well, I'm coming to it. I want an overcoat, I says to the feller. Okay, says he. Reaching over to the rack. Here's a snappy number in camel's hair, says he. And I looked her over. And will you believe it, son? Right square smack dab into the middle of the shoulder was a little oblong patch of white hair. It was Ermintrude. <laughs> yes, sir. It was Ermintrude back with her old master again. Shucks, I put and I busted down. Oh, gee, that must have been a great moment. Sure. Why didn't you re-enlist to forget that, McGee? It was too late. Ermintrude was overcoat by then. Oh. Well, sir, I bought the coat. <laughs> I bought her, Mintrude, and I wore her for years. It was an expensive coat, and but I busted me, but nothing was too good for her, Mintrude. Now, sir, every time it got cold, I could feel her, Mintrude, wrap herself around me real close. <laughs> Trying to snuggle up, confectioner's like. <laughs> she was like that, Mermy was. <clears throat> How much gas put in, boy? Uh, uh, five gallons. Well, give her another two quarts. Might as well have enough. No, never mind. Ah. <laughs> uh, I don't want to crowd the tank. <laughs> How much owe you? Uh, 91 cents. Thank you. Oh, by the way, huh? uh, whatever became of Vermin Truth? Oh, dear. That was the sad part of it all. One day I got caught in the revolving door and tore Vermin Truth's arm off. <laughs> there was nothing else to do. So I went out and shot the coat. gentlemen, we'd like to tell you about a free offer. Yep. We... Next week, folks, we're going to give everybody listening a new car. Any make you ask for. Yeah, All you got to do... Hey, quit no. pushing me, Harpo. Not Harpo. My name is Harlow. Well, quit pushing anyhow. <laughs> well, Fibber McGee is just a little bit wrong, folks. We're not giving away any free cars. But with every purchase of Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner, we are giving away a 40-cent can of Johnson's Touch-Up Enamel. There's a brush right with the can, and it's a cinch to touch up any little scratches or broken places in the finish on your fenders or the body of the car. Now, there's a special introductory price of 98 cents for both Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner, and you can get the can of touch-up enamel free. Better go to your regular wax dealer or service station right away with your 98 cents and ask for Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. Then, clean and wax your car the first chance you get and surprise your family with a car that looks like new. Next week at this time, you have a bright and shining date with Johnson's Auto Wax and Fibber McGee and Molly. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>